The seven things people get wrong about podcasting. I've produced over 600 podcasts for Asia Tech Podcast. I've produced probably over a thousand podcasts in my career. I've podcasted for myself. I've created podcasts for friends. I've created podcasts for clients. I've trained people to podcast. I've spoken at conferences about podcasts. I've been interviewed on other people's podcasts. And now I'm writing books about podcasts. So I've got a good handle on what's right and what's wrong. And I've understood and made my own mistakes. So hopefully I can share some of those with you today so you don't have to make them. The first thing that people get wrong about podcasting is just how big this market is. When people say, how big can podcasting become? They usually say, well, if you look at the research, it says $500 million. That's the size of the podcast advertising market. And I say, we got it all wrong. You see, the podcast market isn't social media advertising because Facebook and Google own 59% of that market in the US and a large slug in the rest of the world. That's a market not worth competing for. Podcasting is not social media. Podcasting is communications and communications sits across the entire suite of communications activities that all brands are involved in. And that means advertising, PR and recruitment. And that is worth $1.1 trillion. So when you call podcasting social media, I feel that is less than 1% of the potential of this market. 500 million is half a billion. Communications is $1,100 billion globally. Two, podcasting is interviewing. I say podcasts aren't interviews, they're conversations. If you interview somebody, you often have to send them Q&A or send them the questions beforehand. Why do I want to listen to an interview? Because I can get everything that you ask that person from their website I want what I don't have, and that's a conversation. I want to see and hear and feel the human element here. And I want to hear the mistakes. And I want to hear that chemistry and feel it and sit in that conversation. Because it's not a lack of information that's my problem. It's a lack of connection. Three. Asians don't podcast. Well, let's take a look at Korea. Korea has the highest penetration rate of all markets in the world. More Koreans listen per head to podcasts than anywhere else in the world, and they're Asian. Four, YouTube is better. I love YouTube, so don't get me wrong, but I don't think it's better to do what we're doing here, which is storytelling and communicating. And I'll tell you why. It's because if you go to YouTube, you're going to have your ass handed to you by some 13-year-old kid. And I say that because I've got a 13-year-old kid in my house. And I know that he will work day and night, weekends, on producing and editing one video. And he'll get more likes than you could ever hope for hiring that from a social media agency. And there are a lot of 13-year-old kids out there and they're relentless. So you can't compete against them. So if you're a brand looking for brand authority or to communicate your new product range or you are looking to recruit talent or retain your talent and tell stories about your ecosystem, there may be better ways. Because what the 13-year-old kid can't do is have a conversation with somebody with meaning because they don't have a depth of experience. You've got 20, 25 years experience in your field. Use it. If you take that to YouTube, you're going to get your ass kicked. But you have a podcast conversation with somebody. That's what my 13-year-old son can't do. And that is the sweet spot for you. And that is why you should consider podcasting and not YouTube. But don't get me wrong. Don't ignore YouTube. Record the video as well and push it out on YouTube because YouTube is fantastic for discovery. But don't forget, it's all about storytelling and audio, and video is a bonus. Five. Well, that's all right, but I don't tell stories. Let me put it this way. You live and die by telling stories. Everything you ever do that was important to you, your family, your relationships, your work, was a story. When you took a job, 
It was a story. When you saw in your head and your mind's eye what you wanted to become within your life, that was a story. When you communicated with a customer, when you sold a product, when you sat with somebody over coffee and talked about what you were planning to do, and when you were at that conversation in the conference talking about what you thought of those events, it was all storytelling. And I think the problem here is, is that when we think storytelling, we either think Steve Jobs or Once Upon a Time. And it's neither. Yes, these are stories. But really the stories we're talking about is communicating what you do and what you think on a daily basis. If you have a phone, you have a storytelling machine there in your hands. So get started. Communications is everyone's business. And if you're not telling stories, you're not in business. Six, podcasting is all about old white guys. Disclaimer, I'm an old white guy. Therefore, what do I know? Well, I do know there are a lot of us and we started it and we're probably responsible for getting the ball rolling. But it's not about us. We're just one voice in there. And then what's happening is, is people are learning that it could be them as well. And I'm seeing here, especially in Asia, a large group of young women taking to podcasting. Why? Well, maybe because the traditional media channels are owned and dominated by old white guys. And rather than wait for somebody to pick them, why don't you just pick yourself? You know, you don't need an old white guy to tell you you can start a podcast like you would, for example, if you wanted to work on radio or become a journalist or work on TV. Instead, you can buy a smartphone or buy a microphone or buy a laptop and now you have your own TV station or you have your own radio station and you pick yourself. And it's fascinating to see young women pick up on this because young women are change. And if we look at all communication technologies from the past, and I bring in my experience from telco and looking at mobile communications and particularly text messaging, that was kicked off by young people and particularly young women. I saw that happen in the mid to late 90s in Japan, where young girls would take their dad's pocket bell, their pages, and they would corrupt them and use them to send encoded messages to each other. So the old guys that the technology was started by and designed for weren't the ones who showed the use case to the mass market. So when we see young women taking on board technology, we also see change. And to those that still think it's about old white guys, have a look at true crime podcasts and look at their audiences and who's doing them. And I bet you, you're not going to find many old white guys there. You're going to find young women obsessing about true crime and going deep into podcasts like old white guys could never do and that gives me hope seven podcasting is going away my answer is it ain't in fact it's getting bigger and the reason it's getting bigger is because it's riding a wave there are two factors driving this perfect storm for podcasts on the one hand you have ai which is only growing in importance in our daily lives and especially here in business. AI is automating everything. And that leaves on only the stuff that can't be automated, and that is the humanity, the communication, the empathy, and the storytelling. That is why podcasting is growing because of AI. Not in parallel, but because of. And the second part to that perfect storm is the decentralization of storytelling. If you look at the changes in society, what we've seen with technology is massive disruption caused by the movement of one model of communication and innovation to another. And in this sense, it's moving from centralized communication to decentralized, just as we're seeing parallels in many other industries in the decentralization of control. And brands have got to get on board because hey, it might not be a three hour podcast, but their people are telling stories left, right and center. And they may be recording five minute audios or five minute videos here and there, but it's storytelling. 
and it's growing. And therefore, what are brands doing? Are they trying to control it or are they trying to curate it? And the smart ones will understand that they don't need to be a pipeline controlling the flow of story as they have done for 50 years with ad agencies and brand reputation managers and marcoms. Instead, they can be smart and they can create a platform and they can curate it. And rather than having to have all the answers themselves, they can simply say, here's a microphone, here's a megaphone, you tell the story.